Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan. Today's video is all about ink blending with Gina K Designs inks and how to create these seamless blends. I'm going to walk you through her ink line and the products that she has available. I'll also show you the tools and paper that I will be using and then I have many, many color combinations that you can use. I will have all of these graphics over on my blog so you can save them for reference. And these are all color combinations that Gina has used in her live videos over the past year. I'm going to start off by going over the ink pads. So first here is one of the ink pads out of Gina's line. I believe this is sea glass and you can see these are a felt based ink pad and it is raised up off of the base a little bit so that it is great for inking techniques. There are premium dye inks available and also she has six in a collection of amalgam inks. Amalgam inks are great for water coloring, Copic coloring, and coloring with pencils and Gamasol. There is also available an embossing and watermark ink so you can use that with your embossing powders. Gina also has reinkers available for all of the ink pads. I'm going to show you here how I reink my ink pad. So I take the top off my reinker bottle and I'm just going back and forth in lines, lightly squeezing my ink out and going all the way down the pad. Being that it's sinking in right away like that tells me that this ink pad really did need to be reinked. If your ink is sitting on top of the ink pad, it probably wasn't that dry. If you plan on doing a lot of inking techniques, I definitely recommend grabbing a reinker right away when you order. Now I'm going to get started with some ink blending. So the inks that I'll be using is Sweet Mango, Sea Glass, Turquoise Sea, Tranquil Teal, and Blue Denim. Now this is one that Gina had used in one of her lives. So I'm going to do it on a little piece of paper here that I just trimmed down. I'll have the measurements listed over in my blog. And this is out of Gina's Layering White cardstock. If you have never used it before, I highly recommend it for ink blending. It is super, super smooth. And what's really great is it works so perfect with her inks. Her ink pads have kind of an airbrushed look to it when it's dry. So it has a smoothing agent in it. It might not look the greatest when you first start ink blending, but let it dry. And I promise you, it will look just absolutely beautiful. When I do my ink blending, I like to work on a slick surface like my glass media mat. It just helps everything glide onto the paper a lot better. I started with that sweet mango at the very bottom. Now I'm bringing in the sea glass and I'm starting in off on the side of the cardstock and blending onto it. Now I'm also using Gina K Designs blending brushes. They have the white handle and white bristles, so you can always tell what color is on there. Now this third color I have is turquoise sea. You could really skip one of these colors if you didn't want to use all of them. I was just going through all of her lists that she had out there and experimenting with all of these different color blends. Now how you hold the handle of the blending brush is really up to you and what you feel comfortable with. I like to have my fingers on the head of the brush. That's just easier for me to control the pressure. I am not going heavy handed on this first run. I am going pretty light. I normally will start light because I can always add color. I can't take it away. And I'm also going in circular motions. I kind of start off the paper in that circular motion and work my way onto the cardstock. That's going to help eliminate any harsh lines. So I had worked in a tranquil teal, which is this one that I am working on now. I flipped my cardstock. And starting at the other end and then I will bring in blue denim and that blue denim really is going to make really give the contrast to this background. Now there are a lot of times that I am cleaning up any of that ink that's on my mat. I don't want to transfer an orange into my blue when I'm ink blending so I do have a rag off on the side that I like to just kind of wipe up in between. It's also another reason I like to work on the glass mat is just really easy to clean up but you can work on whatever surface you have if you have a silicone mat or even a piece of cardstock or grid paper. Now in most cases I do not stop just after this first pass. Most times when I'm ink blending I make a second run through. I didn't apply very much pressure, so if you like it at this level of lightness, that is totally, you know, by preference. But I personally like to come back in with those same colors and just go back over them, 
that's going to help the transition a little bit better. You could see some of that, like the sea glass, almost looks kind of white. And sometimes I will leave that where it's barely blended into the next color. It just kind of leaves this whimsical look to it. What I find really interesting about this particular color combination is we used Sweet Mango. It almost kind of looks like a beach scene. So this is definitely one you could use for any outdoor or beach scene. Now to clean my brushes, I'm taking a damp tidy towel. I rub my bristles over it and then I just wipe that off onto a rag to dry them. And then here I'm just finishing up with adding a little bit more color towards the bottom with that sweet mango. Now I do have a lot of ink blending and a lot of color combinations to show you. I do speed up the process, but I'll go through all of those colors with you. And at the end of the video, I will be taking a couple of these and turning them into cards. This next color combination that I have for you is Wild Dandelion, Sweet Mango, and Coral Reef. Now if you were going to start with ink blending, this is a good one to start with because these colors are all warm colors and they work together really, really well. Sometimes there are colors that are a little bit more tricky to blend together, but this is a great one to start with. And it's just three colors, so I have a color on each end and then right in the middle. And then once again, just blending those in circular motions. I did speed up all of this process, but I still wanted to show these color combinations to you and how I applied them. Now this one would be really good for a type of summer background. It has such nice warm tones to it. My next color combo is going to take us to the beach. I have Sandy Beach, Sea Glass, Turquoise Sea, and Tranquil Teal. And in most of these blended panels that I have, I am going back over them twice. I kind of eliminated a lot of that from the video to save a little bit of time, but I do go back over it quite a bit and then set them off on the side to dry. And this one I think I even use with the Ocean Minded stamp set, really pretty beach scene. This next one has a very fall tone to it. So we have grass green, sweet corn, honey mustard, and fired brick. This color combination would be really good with any type of silhouette stamping. If you have some images of leaves to stamp on there, you could stamp those in black for some silhouettes or even stamp your leaves on here or heat emboss and die cut them out. The next one that I had for you is a rainbow of colors. So this is one of my favorite color combinations for a rainbow. And I know I'm missing a color out of here and I will catch that one in another color combination coming up. So we have red velvet, sweet mango, wild dandelion, jelly bean green, and turquoise sea. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful colors to have for a rainbow. Now the next color combination that I'm gonna be showing you is quite unique. I haven't done these colors before, but I am going to use this panel for a card today. So we have honey mustard, prickly pear, and innocent pink. So very unique, and this one I'll be using my card soon. Now I have wild lilac, turquoise sea, and lucky clover. This is a really pretty uh, kind of cool tones type of color combination. And if you're fairly new to ink blending, doing it on a smaller piece of cardstock list like this is a lot easier than an entire background. So this is a great size to start with too. Now I'm working on the rainbow. So this is the full rainbow. We have red velvet, tangerine twist, wild dandelion, lucky clover, turquoise sea, and we're getting in the wild lilacs. We have the purple there then at the bottom to complete our rainbow. Our next one is another unique one to me. This one is Innocent Pink, Sweet Mango, and I believe I, we used Sandy Beach. So a very soft type of color combination on this one. My next color combination is Peach Bellini, which I don't give enough love to, Sea Glass, and Sandy Beach. And then I have one more color combination for you here, and then we'll turn a couple of these into cards. So this last color combination here that I pulled together was Sweet Mango, Sweet Corn, and Apple Mint, which is another one that I don't give enough love to. That Apple Mint is just a really, really pretty green. And so now I'm gonna take a couple of these and turn them into cards. So to do that, I am bringing out my Misty tool, and I have a piece of heavyweight cardstock here that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And I also have this large floral image from the Flowers For You stamp set. I'm going to ink that up in the obsidian ink and press that down to stamp that onto my cardstock. And I'm gonna stamp it twice to make sure I have some really crisp lines here. Then I'm going to take another piece of paper 
and I am going to add one of my blended panels onto it just with some tape runner to hold it in place. This isn't going to be the actual card base. I just need to stamp my image on it. So I'm lining this up, uh, trying to make sure my margins are as even as they can be. And I'm going to stamp that back down. The reason I'm not using that other piece of cardstock right away is because I have a piece, my blended panel in there, there's a little bit of a lift. So I'm not going to get as crisp of a line on that bottom piece. So I am doing these two steps separately. That bottom piece that I'm using could just be a piece of scratch paper. Then I can take that blended panel, add a tape runner to it, and I'm gonna put this on top of that first stamped image I did. And you can see how it's going to line up like a puzzle and just fit right in there. All of the lines are consistent. There's no dip from any edge of a cardstock. Just be careful when you're pushing it down. You want to give your ink time to dry. I smudged mine a little bit, so let the ink dry for a little bit. And then I went ahead and attached a sentiment that I heat embossed on black cardstock with white embossing powder. And that comes from the Lace Flowers stamp set from the Forever Flowers card kit. And this is the second card I had done. This is the Lace Flowers stamp set image. And I paired it with a greeting off of that same stamp set. If you struggle with ink blending, I hope that these tips help you along the way. Here is a look at all of my blended backgrounds that I did, except for the two that I put on a card. And I will have all of these over on my blog. I made graphics for each color combination so you can save them for future use. And all of my supplies will be listed down below in the video description and on my blog as well. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you back here real soon.